What's up everyone, this is Cyberdyne 8610 and today we're going to try something a little different. We're going to have our top 10 favorite Yu-Gi-Oh archetypes. This is just a top 10 list. I thought it would be kind of fun, a little random. And uh, yeah, there's so many different Yu-Gi-Oh archetypes out there that I thought I'd go ahead and pick my top 10 favorites and uh, give reasons why I like them. There could be different reasons whether I like how they play, uh, the artworks of them. I mean, there's just so many different reasons, really. And uh, yeah, let's get started. Oh, and also, uh, I always wear this shirt when I do these videos, don't I? Oh well, Death Note's awesome, so it works. <laughs> anyway, let's get started. All right, number 10, Arcana Force. Arcana Force unfortunately not too competitive of course because they're with flipping and coin and stuff it's all based on luck so of course can't be too competitive there have been a few that you know the world version of the deck which is pretty fun to use and, and actually pretty scary uh, that's done pretty well but yeah unfortunately uh, they just never been competitive uh they're they are a lot of fun i'm hoping maybe sometime in the future it would be really awesome to see some of the other arcana force cards that were in the tech force game actually be printed you know, maybe it was a future please print video right there. Uh, but yeah, they're just a lot of fun. I like the art type just mainly because the artwork I think is cool. I think what they're based off is cool. And I like how they are based on luck. Like usually how the heads was, uh, if you flip a coin, heads was usually a good effect, tails usually bad, except for uh, a lot of the, uh, the stronger monsters, it was usually good either way. So I don't know, I just always really like the art type and I would love it if they made more of it. All right, number nine, we have Tech Genus. Tech Genus is uh, one of my favorites as well because uh, they, you can synchro summon so quickly. Also, it has an Excel synchro for the archetype and a Delta Excel synchro, uh, which <laughs> the artwork on both of those is awesome. They look like uh, something across between Gundams and Nightmares from Code Geass or something. I don't know. Uh, just really awesome synchro monsters. The artwork's just incredible on both those. And, of course, giant robots. Everybody loves giant robots. Uh, also, just the archetype itself, just being able to synchro summon quickly, I mean, you know, they have one of the best tuner monsters that we have too, but with it being a uh, striker, being one of the best tuner monsters, of course, it getting hit by the ban list. So hopefully that will come back too in the future, and I would love to see Tech Genesis come back with all these new synchro support. I mean, come on, bring them back. They have some of the best uh, support out there for bringing synchro monsters out easily. And like I said, those uh, synchro monsters that they have are awesome. They even brought us a uh, tuner synchro monster, which is also a great addition to synchros. Number eight, Quacky Mirrors. I remember a lot of people not really liking this archetype. I think it was because they really didn't work too well together at the beginning, of course. It seemed like later on, Quakimaros actually started working together. When a Crusader and Ur Knight came out, they worked a lot, you know, better because they started to have uh, a lot of types that worked, you know, that were the same type. At the beginning, you know, we had Drago, which was Dragon, and then, of course, you had just so many different ones where you couldn't use the second effect of Quakimaros, where you can uh, show one of the same type to keep it on the field. Instead, you always had to get rid of the core to keep them on the field, which I always thought was a kind of a cool idea for an archetype as well. Uh, but yeah, later on when they got Urna and Crusader, they actually were a lot of fun to play. And then, of course, Reborn Tengu and stuff too. So yeah, it's always been one of my favorites. I like the idea of it. I like how they had like the little story for them. And uh, another archetype that I would really like to see, of course, uh, more printed for in the future. All right, now we have number seven. Of course, this is probably on most people's lists. I mean, if you're going to make a list for this, this is probably on your list, and that is Crystal Beasts. Crystal Beasts, of course, one of my favorite archetypes because of the nostalgia, really. Uh, they are a lot of fun to use. Again, an awesome way uh, how they worked, where you they get destroyed, they go to Spell or Trap Card Zone, which I thought was a really neat idea as well. And then, of course, their boss monster, Rainbow Dragon. Everybody likes Rainbow Dragon, right? Uh, one of the coolest boss monsters that GX gave us, and one of the coolest art types GX ever gave us as well. So, uh, really nostalgic to use those. I remember using Crystal Beast when they first came out. I remember actually getting Rainbow Dragon on my first pack of Tactical Evolution, which, you know, is when it came out. And, yeah, I mean, it's just one of those cool art types. I think that's on most people's lists. All right, now we have uh, number six, Noble Knights. Noble Knights, of course, one of those newer art types, of course. Uh, I don't think a lot of us really uh, thought much of them when they first came out. Of course, their sneak preview card was the first thing. We were all like, you know, it's a good normal monster, but there really wasn't much to it. Then after that, of course, we got another sneak preview card, and then, the, you know, we started saying, okay, we can actually, you know, go for Excalibur and uh, Blade Armor Ninja. Then after that, we started getting Medrot, now we're getting a Welch, we had Welch now we're getting a Dustrin, and then evidently, uh, uh, Shadow Specters are going to have more cards for them as well. And I actually see this archetype being one of the top meta decks. I actually do see that. Of course, I know, a lot of people are saying, well, the reason it's on this list is they're knights. And that's 
partially the reason. I like the story behind it. They're the Knights of the Round Table, and of course, you know, that's one of the awesome things about Yu-Gi-Oh! I always like the little stories, you know, I always try to read up on those, and, uh, and I think it's always really neat when they have an actual story to it. Uh, but yeah, I think this archetype is going to be a lot more fun to use in the future. It's getting a lot of great support, and I'm hoping maybe it will be one of those uh, top meta decks in the future. Let's just hope. <laughs> Alright, number five, we have Gladiator Beasts. Gladiator Beasts uh, came out around the time when I went to, when I got really back into Yu-Gi-Oh! I kind of was more of a collector there for a while in, in terms of GX. You know, I played for a little bit, then I kind of went back to being a collector, and then after that I went to my first sneak preview with Gladiator's Assault, and uh, Gladiator Beasts came out. And I remember actually getting a bunch of them out of packs, and I just really like the idea of this archetype as well, how they would uh, tag team. You know, they, if they were attacked, or if they did attack, they would uh, just switch out. And I always thought that was a really interesting idea. Not only that, using Prisma with them to bring out their fusions even easier, and uh, I was really hoping, too, that they would have more fusions. I think they only had uh, about four fusions, I think the whole archetype has, which is kind of a shame. I was hoping for, like, each Glare Beast would basically have a fusion. You know, but unfortunately that didn't happen. But yeah, it was, and it's also what I admire about this archetype is that it would not die. I swear Konami made so many different cards, you know, try to hit it in so many different ways, and this archetype did last a while. You know, it was one of the top decks for the longest, and it stayed in the meta for the longest time. So I think that was pretty awesome. Uh, only really, I guess, a couple formats ago, and then they kind of just die out and not be as popular. But I'm hoping in the future maybe we'll see them again as well. Alright, now we have number four, uh, Gym Knights. Of course, Gym Knights would be on this list. You guys know that these are one of my favorites. Uh, it's another one of those dual terminal slash hidden arsenal archetypes I really like, and just about all those archetypes that came out through there, I really enjoy them. They, the artwork was always amazing on all those cards. The ideas were always really good, like they actually really planned it out. And uh, with Gym Knights, of course, it's Crystal Beasts and Elemental Heroes together. That's a no-brainer. Of course, for somebody that really likes uh, watching GX, I mean, this archetype was perfect. Uh, the fusions that they have, I love fusion monsters, so I like the idea of being able to fuse for these, and then you could also exceed some, and these could also use number 11 big guy and stuff too, so they were actually really competitive. Using Citrine, you can swarm the field. Gym Knights are nothing to laugh at. They're actually pretty powerful. They're not widely used, but they're, they are pretty powerful, believe it or not. I'm hoping in the future too, like with all the Hidden Arsenal Dual Trauma Archetypes, maybe they'll continue with them in the future. I don't know, or do something. I really hope those archetypes aren't forgotten. There's a lot of great ones out there, like X-Sabers and even Jirax and stuff too. I'd love to see Jirax come back too. And I'm hoping in the future we'll see more of them, but even for now, uh, Gym Knights do really well. They're one of the few decks that still use fusions, and that's like their main form of fighting. So, you know, they of course have to be on this list. Alright, number three, another Hidden Arsenal Archetype we have is Gishkis. Gishkis are basically the only deck right now that uses Ritual Monsters, which is a real shame, honestly. I like Ritual Monsters, too. It's a, it's a form of uh, summoning, I think, that's kind of been forgotten. I guess with all the XC summoning synchros and all this stuff, we've really forgotten Rituals. And, uh, yeah, I would like to see that come back, actually. It's pretty much the only deck that does use Rituals. I guess you could say Darmageddon and stuff. They use that a little bit, but really, nowadays, you only see uh, Gishkis. Uh, the artwork, just like like I said already, uh, the Dual Terminal and Hidden Arsenal art types have the best artwork, I swear. Uh, Gishkis are no exception. They have really awesome artwork. The ideas behind them, the story of Dual Terminal and Hidden Arsenal anyway, is one of the best ever. I mean, just that whole storyline, you know, that includes Gem Knights, Drax, and everything. I, I love that story. Uh, I wish we would actually get, like, the English version of that book where we can read through it as well. Uh, but yeah, just basically, it's another art type that a lot of people don't really look to that's actually pretty powerful and it can be scary. I mean, they can drop one of those ritual monsters really easily. I mean, they have uh, two different monsters that you can get three of each of in the deck that can uh, account for the whole cost of the ritual seven. That's awesome. Also, even though uh, they didn't get to use it, Heretic Gishkis would have been a pain. The ban list hit it before it happened, the level six build. So, of course, it, nobody really got to see what it could do in the meta. But that would have been easily a tier one deck, if not even more than that. You know, it was going to be number one, but of course the ban list crushed it before that happened. So that was a real shame too, because I was really uh, looking forward to seeing Gishkis do well in the meta. And that was kind of their big chance. Even though they've had some other builds too that done well, that would have been really awesome. And everyone knows that if you test it out or went against that deck, that one was scary. It would just destroy your hand and everything using Gus Kraken. And it's just really awesome. So, yeah, maybe in the future, too, we'll see more rituals and hopefully, yet again, I know, like a broken record, see more uh, support for these uh, dual terminal and hidden arsenal attacks. Please, Konami, bring them back. You know, continue with this. 
All right, now we have number two, Elemental Heroes, of course. Another one of those I feel like is going to be on just about everyone's list, right? Uh, Elemental Heroes are just one of those archetypes, you know, mainly nostalgic reasons why it's number two, uh, but also gameplay. I remember using the deck, uh, actually, at tournaments and stuff, and I just really like how they worked. Basically, every Elemental Hero had a fusion that it could go into, and all kinds of different combinations of fusions. And, like, with Shining Flare Wingman being, like, probably my favorite Elemental Hero, I guess, if I have to choose. Elemental Heroes are actually still being used, too. So, they've had a lot of support. They keep getting support, which I love seeing more support for them. I wish the Mast Heroes would get a little bit more support, too, because it's kind of like a sub-archetype of Elemental Heroes. And I really enjoyed seeing those. Uh, the only thing, too, that I remember getting annoyed about as a kid is how... Uh, I like Neospatians, don't get me wrong. But I always hated it in the show how uh, Jaden kind of forgot about the original Elemental Heroes. He went straight to Neospatians. And like I said, I like them, but I like the original Elemental Heroes better. So I always hated it whenever he just stopped using them. It was like, I think towards the end, which is season four, which we never got over here in English, uh, where he started using Flame Wingman again. I remember being really excited about that because, like I said, I'm not saying anything bad about Neospatians or Neos. I like those guards, of course, because they're still uh, counting as uh, Elemental Heroes stuff too. But the originals, uh, you know, Flame Wingman, Flare Wingman, uh, Thunder Giant, uh, Rampart Blaster, Bubble Man, all the, you know, just all of those. They're just, I would love to have seen more of those in the anime. And they kind of... I don't know, they only did it for first season, then like second and third, they didn't really use them at all. And then it seemed like fourth, they finally started getting back to it. So, yeah, Elmo Turo is always going to be one of my favorites. And I'm hoping in the future they'll get a little bit stronger. And they're still doing well, so that's always awesome too. Alright, and number one, if you're, of course, a subscriber for a long time, or, you know, somebody I've talked to before on my favorite art type, you're going to know what this is. I mean, it's a, it should be fairly easy, and that is Dragoonities. Dragoonies have always been one of my favorites. The artwork's nice, they have knights and dragons. Do I need to say more? Uh, the idea behind them, I really like Synchro Monsters, so, of course, I like how they how they work, especially too how it's a dragon and a winged beast that have to synchro into them. They were like really one of the only uh, types of cards to do that, you know, that were that specific. And it really didn't hurt the archetype. I mean, they uh, not many people pay attention to them either. I remember when uh, Vatriana, uh, their synchro was uh, only like, what, $2 over here? And nobody thought Dragoonies were going to do anything. And then it was like overnight, $30 card. Because people realized that that kind of card could instantly go into Stardust or Stardust Assault, Scrap Dragon. Uh, there's just so many different builds, and now even with uh, the Dragon Rulers, we have Tempest, uh, and that also helped the deck. So yeah, Dragoonies, they're actually doing pretty well in Japan, and I'm glad to see that. Which is one of my favorites, just because, I mean, everything, really. I like how they work, I like the art style, I like just everything. I mean, the whole art type's just always been one of my favorites, and again, with Hidden Arsenal and Dual Terminal, please... Give us more of them. You know, give us some more synchros or give them their own XC. Instead of like a Tom and stuff, I actually want to see uh, XC for Dragoonies. You know, not just, you know, an XC that works for Dragons. That could also be used for Dragoonies. I want to see direct support for Dragoonies in the future. And <laughs> pretty much everything that's on this list, I want to see more for, uh, more support for it. So yeah, tell me what you guys think. If you have your own top 10 list of favorite art types, there's a lot to choose from, by the way. Of course, uh, tell me in the comments or make a video of it yourself and uh, put it as a video response. All right, so yeah, I hope you guys have enjoyed this. Thanks for watching. A little bit random, and I thought maybe we might do a few more uh, top 10 lists. So if you have any ideas for the future lists or whatever that you want to see, of course, uh, tell me in the comments. All right, so yeah, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys later. See ya.